If you don't know me, uh, let me go ahead and tell you I've spent 10 years in the South Carolina Department of Corrections, state prisons. Um, I was released just over a year ago. So for anyone who's curious, I thought I'd just go over and describe how my first day back into society went, what I was thinking, how I felt, what I was experiencing, uh, all that stuff. So I remember just being giddy, full of glee the whole morning, of course, um, while I was still in prison, waiting on my mom and stepdad to come pick me up. Um, they were driving a couple hours out there to pick me up. They called my name and I uh, stepped foot on the other side of the fence, you know, that barbed wire fence. Uh, the door slides back and, uh, you know, you take that first step out and man, it's it's wild. It's like being picked up from school. You know, you just step right out and hop in your car when it pulls up. And um, I think the first place we went was a gas station nearby because they needed to get some gas. Uh, my parents had brought me some clothes, an outfit that I already asked them to bring. Um, and I would just remember being so ready. I was so ready to get out of these jail clothes. They kind of send you home and, you know, not a jail jumpsuit, but it's basically um, like a white t-shirt and um, these jumpsuit, tan jumpsuit pants without the SCDC inmate letters printed on the side, you know, so no one thinks you're an escaped inmate, but they're just a plain tan. So pretty much what I've been wearing for 10 years. Um, and that's what they sent me home in and some Crocs, the Crocs that they give you to wear in the shower. That's what you, that's how you leave prison in my state. So I was just so ready to get into real clothes. Um, I couldn't wait. And when we pulled over at the gas station, I said, I'm going inside and I'm going to change in the bathroom. I just wanted to put on real clothes again. And I remember going in the bathroom and it's, this is immediately, I mean, I haven't, we haven't been driving. We just left the prison maybe 10 minutes ago and I already am about to do something that makes me feel like mm, this might've been something I'm not supposed to do out here. This, that was probably a little weird of me to do. So when I walked in this public bathroom, um, I noticed the stall door was closed. There was one stall and one urinal and a sink. And I noticed the stall door was closed and I immediately go and I like kind of bang on it and I'm like, Hey, and some guy was like, yeah, I'm in here. And I'm like, Oh my bad. And so I just, you know, the, the reason that felt weird and I kind of realized it was weird. I guess usually out here, you kind of, when you see a stall door closed and you want to check and see if someone's in there or not, you kind of do the little you know, the quick look under to see if you see feet or anything. The reason um, that I was not in the habit of doing that, and it's kind of, that's precisely what you don't want to do in prison is because, well, there are a lot of weirdos in prison. And, you know, of course, there's a bathroom in your cell, but they also have the community bathrooms uh, in the main common area of the cell block when everyone's allowed to come out and mingle and play cards and all that. They do have some bathroom areas and they have like these shower curtain looking things that cover uh, the toilets that everyone uses to dookie in. And uh, you don't really want to go up to these shower curtains and look like you're trying to be like looking under there and looking, you know, to see if someone's in there because um, you're probably going to get accused of being on some some pretty weird stuff. You know, you're, you're up to something weird. Why? What, what are you doing? And there are some guys who probably uh, would try to do that in there. So it's justified. But the point is, um, the, the, the common thing to do in there for that reason is do a quick pop, pop. You know, you do a double hit on the shower curtain or the rail or whatever um, to just do a quick check. And if someone's back there, they'll, oh, back here. That's what you do. So that's what I was used to. So I did that. And I realized ah, it's probably not a normal thing to do, but I guess it's no big deal. Anyways, I changed in the bathroom right there. I was like, if somebody walks in, they walk in. I don't care. I'm fresh out. You know, I'm ready to get in these clothes. So I pull on my normal clothes and um, I walked out of the bathroom and we continued down the road to the first place I would eat outside of prison, which was a nearby Cracker Barrel. And so we go in this Cracker Barrel and we're seated and I just, it, it threw me off. It's like one of the first things that threw me off also was just this polite 
waitress <laughs> coming up to our table and just being so nice and friendly to me and asking, you know, essentially, uh, how can I serve you today? You know, and it, that was so weird to me because I'm used to, you know, this time, if we're in the cafeteria where we're going to be eating, I'm like, if I'm sitting down, I'm already looking at the line that still hasn't got their food or their drinks. Um, and I'm like plotting, hey, I wonder if I can sneak back in line and get me an extra biscuit or, a, you know, refill my cup of milk because you're only allowed one cup of milk, you know, stuff like that. And if you get caught, you're getting yelled and screamed at by these guards. And it's just like the last thing that's going to happen is anyone in there being nice and friendly to you and treating you like your, you know, everyday waitress is going to treat you like that was it had been so long since someone had even talked to me in such a friendly way. But as, as unusual as it was, of course, it was very I was, you know, that was great um, to be to have that from her. And um, and then the next thing, when they finally brought our food, you know, of course, I'm sitting opposite of my stepdad and my mom. And they get their food, and I, I swear, like, I got, like, a pancake breakfast, you know, with, like, eggs and bacon. By the by the time it took them to do their salt and the, little, you know, let me add some butter and let me put a little sweetener in my coffee or whatever to get, just to get their plates and food and drinks prepared <laughs> for them to start eating it, um, I was pretty much almost already done. Um, I, you know, and then, and, and then I, you know, I realized maybe this is also something that is unusual when I finished and they had just started when I realized I had finished and they, you know, I'm looking at them and they had just started. Um, and I think, you know, you get in this habit in prison of you need to eat fast. You need to get all your food down very fast. You know, you don't even take the time to enjoy it. Um, number one, because if you're eating in the cafeteria, well, each cell block gets a very short uh, amount of time to eat their food, and then it's time to get up. You got y'all. You got to go. We got the next cell block coming in. They got to get their food. We got to get all these blocks fed in a certain time period, and that's just the schedule of the prison yard. You know, so you get used to that, and then also it's like. <laughs> It's like this thing, um, anytime, like in the cell block, if you open a Snicker bar or a snack or a bag of chips, if you get anything, any kind of food you open or a drink, man, there's always somebody there. And it's not even like an intimate, like, you know, some bully, like, hey, man, give me a piece of that. Like, it, it could be your buddy or your friend or somebody you're cool with. Somebody is always going to come up to you and be like, man, let me get a piece of that. Damn, like, let me get a little piece. Let me just break me off a little piece. It's just what everybody does. And so, like, everybody, you get in this. Do you know how annoying it would get? Every, you cannot open anything. Every time you open something to eat it, somebody somewhere is going to be begging you for a piece of it. It's so annoying. Um, you know, nobody minds doing it one or two times, but every time, every day for years. And so I feel like everyone also gets in the habit of just when they open something, they kind of do it, you know, and hurry up and eat it just so I can eat the whole thing. Let me enjoy one whole thing. Um, <laughs> there was that, you know, I, I was obviously in the habit of eating very fast. Um, I feel like I'm most, I, I've gotten out of that habit now. There are a lot of habits I'll talk about that I still to this day do. Um, for instance, pacing. Um, I used to pace around in my cell a lot. Speci it, it really started up when I did 45 days in solitary confinement. Um, but even after that in prison, I would pace around my cell a lot when I was thinking. And, and, and especially when I first got out, like, it, you know, even if I was in my buddy's garage, I'd be pacing around the garage while I'm talking to him. Pacing. I, I still to this day, this morning, <laughs> before I, when I was thinking of making this video this morning, and I was like, hmm, should that, is that a subject I should talk about? I, I was pacing up and down my hallway thinking about it. Like I, I pace. Um, so that's also a habit. And also something I was doing the first day out, I would just pace. Now, uh, we left Cracker Barrel and we drove back home. And as soon as we get back into my hometown, the first thing I notice. Um, and this has probably got to be the case for anyone who does 10 years. Everything, I didn't even, I almost didn't recognize my city anymore. And, and I'm a guy who never left his hometown. You know, I was born and raised here and I didn't too much travel anywhere. Um, I couldn't even recognize it. I wasn't able to find 
the stores that I used to know, everything had been torn down and something else had been built there. And then that got torn down and something else had been built there. I mean, I was, everything was different. And so that was a little overwhelming. So we decided to stop at the local Walmart. I did have a little money saved up. Of course, it's been 10 years. I knew I was going home one day and one way or another, however I made money, I did keep a little bit put away and I had a little money to come home with. So uh, my mom and stepdad did take me to Walmart to do some grocery shopping. And I remember that felt exciting in a way. Um, and I was really excited to be grocery shopping. Number one, probably just because I'm out and I'm excited to do anything on the other side of that fence. But also, I think it's got a connection to canteen day in prison. It's like the best day of the week. Um, you know, so and, and, and you go and, you know, you're getting all these snacks and then you walk in Walmart and you're seeing all these snacks and it's like, you know, you're picking out what you want. It's the same thing. Um, and it's just it's a connection, I think. Um, canteen day is always fun in prison. Everyone's getting food. You're going to have snacks. You get, you know, everyone's going to have a little ice cream. You got to eat it right away because it'll melt. So everybody's running around with their ice cream. They got their food. Um, you know, everybody's got money. You know, you can give a couple, about five bucks worth of snacks for a cigarette or some weed or buy, you know, everyone's got the materials from, from canteen to make the prison wine. So there's a bunch of prison wine getting made and uh, everyone's just in a good mood usually. So I feel like that kind of brought back, you know, a lot of feelings from canteen day in prison, just being in Walmart being around all this food and these snacks and drinks. <laughs> so there's that. I also just being in public, um, no matter gas station, Cracker Barrel, Walmart at this point, being in public was always a little weird. Um, just from how I'm used to people and their movement in prison, like for instance, someone walking a little close behind you, people don't really do that in prison. You shouldn't be walking behind someone just because. Um, and just a lot of little, little things like that, but I was aware that I needed to get over that. So I was working on that. And I also, uh, over a year later, I also distinctly remember this feeling of, you know, when I was walking around these other people, just feeling like I wasn't supposed to be there. You know, um, I almost felt like I was doing something wrong or like when you sneak into a part of the jail or prison that you're not supposed to be. Um, it felt like I was sneaking into the, the back warehouse of the canteen room where everyone goes to buy their canteen. It felt like I had snuck back there and, you know, there, I wasn't supposed to be there. It still felt that way to me. Uh, I guess you could say I didn't feel like a citizen yet. Uh, I still felt like an inmate. And then don't even get me started on trying to figure out the self checkout. You know, I had, you know, I scanned all my snacks and then I had like bananas. And, I, you know, I don't know I'm supposed to weigh my produce before I bag it. And the machine's yelling at me. And there's some lady behind me. You don't even know that I just got done doing a decade in a small room, smaller than your bathroom. Like, and she's like, like, ma'am, I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, just hold on. Um, so there was that. It's starting to get a little overwhelming at that point, but we leave Walmart and we go home. And first, you know, home is my mom's house. Um, and I stayed there for a full week before I later moved into my house, which is the house I'm in now. But when I first got home, this is the same house that I lived in when I went to prison because I was still like, you know, 20 when I went to prison and the whole house had changed. Even the floors, they used to be carpet and they had been changed into like wood floors. The walls had been repainted. Um, everything was different. And, um, I remember the first thing I wanted to do was I went to my room and I had already planned ahead of time, maybe for six months before I even got released from prison, I was cash apping money to a friend of mine on the outside and I was getting them to order clothes 
offline for me so that I would have clothes when I got home. So, and then, you know, about two weeks before I came home, I had them bring all these clothes to my mom. So I just know I was so excited to try on all these clothes. It's yeah. And I know anyone gets excited when they get some new clothes um, to try them on. But listen, I was excited times 100 because for 10 years, I've been wearing these jumpsuits and I don't, you know, I'm sure it's not only me as far as people who've been in prison. Um, I'm sure it's not only me, but as for me, um, I got to a point several years in and this continued all the way until even a little while after I had gotten out of prison. I began to, I didn't even know what I looked like in normal clothes anymore. I had been wearing these jumpsuits for so long, these big baggy jumpsuits. Um, I didn't know what I looked like in jeans. You know, I couldn't even imagine what I looked like. I was, you know, and before you come home, you think about a lot of stuff. I was trying to imagine what is my style even going to be? It's been 10 years. People went from baggy pants to skinny jeans to like, you know, I don't even know what I'm going to wear. Um, what do I even like? And, you know, I couldn't even imagine myself in, in shirts and jeans anymore to the point I would dream. Um, you have dreams and a lot of these dreams while you're in prison, they'll take place in prison. But I had dreams that I was on the outside and that I was hanging out with friends, but they'd all be in normal clothes. They'd be in the clothes that I remember them in. And I would be in a jumpsuit. Or at the very least, I'd be in a white t-shirt and like jumpsuit pants, orange, tan, you know, sometimes we had tan jumpsuits for several years. And then at one point they changed it to orange. You know, I was always wearing orange or tan jumpsuits in my dreams. I wasn't even dreaming in normal clothes. And so, um, it was, I was so excited. I just really, really wanted to put on some real clothes and see how I looked. And so I had fun doing that, as weird as it sounds. You know, that's what I did for a while when we got home. I remember the rest of the day or, or that night, even in that next morning, uh, as far as my mom and stepdad going to work and things, just little things would set me off or trigger me, like uh, hearing the keys, hearing the keys jingle. You know, you, it's like a it's like a dog almost. Um, you hear keys jingle. It's a, it's an officer coming. They're somewhere nearby. They might be coming to your cell. You need to get up, get ready. You need to get alert. Make sure they're not coming in your cell because you know um, me personally and most inmates, they got something they need to hide in there. Whether it's a knife or a contraband cell phone, something. Um, you got to be ready. And it's just instinctual after a while, especially ten years. Um, and I would hear these keys and it would like get me out of my sleep and I almost would get up until I stopped myself and reminded myself, hey, that's your mom or that's your stepdad. You just go back, lay back down. It's over. It's over now. I remember when I took a shower that night. I was in there maybe, I mean, literally three minutes, maybe three to five minutes and I hopped out and I was about to start drying off and I thought about it and I said, you know, there's no time limit on the showers anymore. You don't have to take really fast showers anymore. Sometimes if you're on lockdown, you know, officers are letting two to three inmates out at a time to shower and they're going to come by and, and announce, Hey, it's time to go. We got to get these other guys, the next three guys out. Um, and you get about five minutes if that, and even if you aren't on lockdown to where it's really controlled by an officer, if you're just, you know, they let everyone out and you, you do it, how you do it, um, as a courtesy, just so there's like 200 inmates in like, you know, four showers. I mean, everybody needs to keep it to five minutes, you know, just as a, to be a decent inmate, you know, um, so you really get used to that. And I, I kind of realized, hey, you don't have to take a short shot. You could you could <laughs> hypothetically stay in here all night um, if you want to. You know, you, you can sh you can you can take a long shower now. And I hopped back in and I probably showered for about 20, 30 minutes. Um, so just, just little things like that, you know, you, that you just, you got to shake yourself awake sometimes and that's, you know, Hey, it's over, you know? So there was little things like that. Uh, lastly, I know the next day, even though it's not my, you know, this is no longer my first day out. Uh, it's worth mentioning my next day, my second day. Uh, I have three sisters and they all wanted to kind of take me to the mall and each buy me one thing. It's very nice of them. 
Um, but I, man, the mall was way too much for me. It was like three times what Walmart was so much talking and, you know, in prison, everybody kind of like, nobody wants to be overheard. No one wants to have someone eavesdropping or hearing what they're talking about when they're talking to someone it becomes a, a real habit to just kind of like take the oomph out of your voice and just talk to where only that person you're talking to can hear you, even in an echoey environment like prison, which is all cement and tile and metal. So just to hear all of that constant rumbling of voices and conversations all through the mall uh, was off-putting. People, again, people walking behind me, bumping, you know, especially at the mall, bumping into me, brushing my shoulder. It was just really different. And um, physically, it exhausted me. It, I, I made it like an hour. And, you know, it it goes back to just when you're in prison, you're in that small room, you know, you can exercise and all that. You can do push ups, but ultimately you don't do a lot of walking. You don't do a lot of moving around at all for any reason. You're just, you don't have the space to move around a lot. You're not used to activities driving here. Then let's go get lunch here. Then let's, Hey, might catch a movie tonight, you know, and, and just all these activities. Like it, it just, um, it wore me out just being in the mall for like an hour, um, going up the steps, escalator. I mean, I was done. Like I was physically drained. I was like, my guys, I'm ready to go home. Um, had to take a nap and I'm not really a nap guy. So definitely noticed that. Um, but all in all, that's pretty much my first day out. Uh, and those are the experiences I went through. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it gave you some information or at least entertained you. And let me know if you liked it. If you want to hear more, maybe we do the first week, first month out. Let me know. Um, but other than that, that's the video. And I will be back soon with another.